Hey guys, Colin here. Um, we're going to be looking at an Emotet JavaScript dropper sample today. This is a pretty interesting piece of JavaScript, uh, one which um, yeah, initially was evading quite a few antivirus uh, scanners just because of the way that the data was encoded within it. Uh, we've previously looked at Emotet JavaScript before in the context of downloaders uh, where there was some uh, encoded data within the JavaScript which was being um, decoded at runtime uh, and then that would uh, execute um, on the on your machine and reach out to a malicious C2 server in order to download uh, a binary. Um, in this case, the binary is built into the JavaScript uh, and it's just simply dropped onto the victim's machine. Um, so we're going to take a real quick, uh, quick and dirty look at how to decode that JavaScript, uh, deobfuscate it, um, and then enable you to see exactly how the bad guys have achieved this. Uh, so this is the sample we're using today. Uh, this was uploaded to Virus Total on the 18th. Um, so in terms of the submissions in the wild, what we've seen, um, you know, very similar to other Emotech campaigns, um, invoice themed, UPS themed, Vodafone themed, whatever. I saw something very similar when I uh, analyzed the actual file uh, and we'll have a look at the JavaScript itself right now. So this is it, really similar to what we previously analyzed. There's one line of JavaScript code, um, not much white space, obviously no line breaks and, and really pretty unreadable. Uh, so we'll save this to a new file um, just because it's not good to work on the original. Uh, and then we'll also prettify this as well uh, using the uh, Sublime uh, prettify plugin. You can see it's still a bit messy and a bit noisy. Um, you know, the bad guys have done a good job of making this um, you know, pretty unreadable. Um, and if you went through this line by line, you'd probably be uh, chasing your tail quite a lot. Uh, you can see there's quite a few repeated function calls. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on with addition and, and um, lots of variables which probably don't get referenced anywhere else. Uh, but actually what we're looking for is a for loop um, which iterates over some uh, encoded string of data. In the previous sample, we had one big uh, variable, or one variable rather, which had one big uh, string of text, which was the encoded data. Actually here, what we've got are uh, pieces of data, which uh, are probably being concatenated in some, uh, in some of the routine. So lots of different strings that we can't just pluck uh, one of them out. And in fact, if you have a look at $S4, you can see $S4 is immediately passed into this function here, uh, v$qlafa. Uh, the same with this uh, variable here is passed into this function and, and the same again, the same again, the same again. So there's some kind of modification to this encoded data. It's not easy enough uh, for us to just pick it out, copy and paste it into uh, CyberChef and do what we did last time. Uh, what we actually need to do is probably patch the code a little bit uh, in order to, to make it spit out uh, what, we want, uh, what we want to see, which is the decoded data. Uh, here, what we got here is uh, suspiciously, suspiciously like a, an XOR key. Uh, we can see actually where this um, uh, variable is being referenced. We can see it's being there's a, a value which is being uh, taken there, which is the key's length. Uh, we can see elsewhere where that's being used as well. Um, crafty, uh, that it's being passed through to Z8S, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's being passed into uh, this function call here, which is um, the product of which is being given into F4GAZH. And then that is um, being passed as part of an XOR routine uh, and stored in this variable here. Um, so yeah, quite interesting and a lo lot of breadcrumbs to follow and probably probably something you don't want to analyze line by line. The real quick and dirty way to do this is look for the for loop um, within this code. So here we've got a for loop, we've got open curly brace and a closed curly brace uh, on line 350. So that's the body of the for loop and that's where the, the for loop starts and finishes. And actually the last line of the, of the for loop is of most interest to us. So this variable here is the product of these two values being XOR together. Uh, what I imagine is happening um, is the encoded data is being decoded via this XOR routine. It's probably something to do with this variable here, which has got the key, uh, and that's fine. We don't really need to go into the weeds of how that is happening. Uh, but what we do like to see is the, the output of, uh, of what this variable NSYGJRN is. We can see it's uh, being passed to another function immediately after the, the for loop uh, and stored in a variable EQP, and then EQP is then executed itself. So we'll disarm this code. We'll actually comment it out. We use command and forward slash in the Sublime to, uh, to comment those lines of code out. And actually what we want to do is pass this through a JavaScript interpreter uh, and spit out what this variable NSYGJRN actually is. So we'll console.log that variable once it's uh, finished the for loop. Notice I put that line of code after the for loop, so after that closing curly brace, uh, in order to spit out um, what, that, uh, what that decoded data might be. 
We'll save it, we'll flip to our terminal, and we'll run it through Node.js. You can use SpiderMonkey, you can use um, D8, or any other JavaScript interpreter which you're, you're familiar with. I like to use Node.js because of its versatility. So we run Node against sample.js, and we can see there's an awful lot of content which is being spat out to my terminal. Um, again, probably not readable within a terminal window, but you can see all, already we've got something which looks a little bit more like code. So we'll redirect this to uh, an actual file. We'll call it out.js. We'll flip back to Sublime. We'll have a look at out.js. We'll prettify it. And we can see actually um, some, some very readable code here which we can work with. The alarm bell should be ringing for most of you uh, where we see a variable with the string contents that begin with 4D5A, 4D5A being the magic numbers for a portable executable. Um, and that's, this you know, looks exactly like what we'd expect to see a dropper uh, contain. Um, this is the executable that's actually gonna drop to disk. We can see that the variable LGC is being referenced here in this write text function, but first off it's passed off to, uh, to a function called SWH2A. Uh, and this looks like it's actually a, a conversion where it takes that um, string of data and converts it into hexadecimal format, um, probably for then uh, writing into the file. We can see there's a, some kind of weird custom error message that's being generated by the, by the bad guys, ActiveX objects being uh, uh, defined here. Uh, and then we can see JQT, this um, variable is um, the, the creation of a new temporary file, or sorry, a new file within the temporary folder. A get special folder two is the temp folder. Uh, and we can see it assigns it a random uh, name um, and just pre uh, just depends the .exe extension to it as well. So if we follow the breadcrumb trail a little bit, we see JQT is the, the file name being, uh, being written. We can see this variable here, DC, which is the stream of data uh, being opened. Uh, write text is, is gonna write any text into the open stream and that is the product of uh, the hexadecimal encoding of this 4D5A uh, nice long string of, uh, of decoded data. Um, it's gonna define its type and character set, open the file, copy all the data to it, save it, close it, we're going to generate this pop-up, probably just to put the user off, uh, but more importantly, down here, we're actually going to run the file. Uh, so the JavaScript will write the contents of this um, this dropped executable to the random to the random file name in the temp folder, uh, and then it's going to execute uh, on the machine without any further interaction from the user. So we'll save out.js, um, we'll get rid of that message, and we can actually take this and run it in a VM, and we can see what it looks like. So let's stick this in Remnux, uh, so I'll paste the file in here, Let's get Process Hacker going. Uh, we can just see it run actually and see whether or not we get what's, what's probably gonna be a random looking file name. We get the weird error message that the uh, the bad guys have, uh, have put in for us. Uh, and we see WScript Fire, we get a random looking file name. And the executable now cleans itself up a little bit. Uh, it looks like it spawned a new process and then tidied up the parent. And then this is the uh, the parent process uh, of what whatever is gonna come next. And we can see actually it looks like it injects into wallpaper users.exe. Uh, which is now going to be um, uh, in, man in the middling our connections uh, in terms of what Emotet is designed to do. So we'll suspend the process here. Uh, in fact, if you wanted to get any indicators out of this, what you'd probably look at is the strings in memory. Let's have a look at memory strings uh, and maximize this a little bit. And you can scroll through here. Here we see some IP addresses. Um, we see um, you know lots of stuff about the machine it's uh, running on at the moment. And one of the things, if you want to get the, uh, the, the network indicators, you can just filter for HTTP, for example, uh, and we can see all references to that and what looks to be uh, a C2. Now, if you were taking a PCAP, for example, you'd probably see some traffic to this IP address. This is probably the C2 that's being talked to uh, from the actual bank intrusion. Um, so that's what I want to show you. Some, so that's some really quick and uh, dirty ways that you can um, deobfuscate the JavaScript. You can see exactly what's going on under the hood uh, and you can actually uh, get the contents of the drop file uh, and then perform some static analysis on that file in order to corroborate any behavioral analysis that you've done. Thanks guys.